much things. Today at this session, I would like to report that Tibet was an independent country that the communist China occupied. It had been more than half a century since occupation and the situation in Tibet has been deteriorating year by year. The main reason for this is the fact that the early promises made by China to help the Tibetans through the so-called democratic reforms have disappeared like a rainbow and instead policies to oppress the Tibetan people were carried out. At this point, I would like to report about the situation in Tibet in general and in particular the events taking place in Ngapa in Amdo, a province in northeastern Tibet that has in close personal association with me. Apart from the general suffering of the Ngapa Autonomous Prefecture, the people of this region have a particular wound causing excessive suffering that spans three generations. This wound is very difficult to forget and uh, to heal. On 16 March 2008, when the people of Ngaba, led by the monks of Kirti Monastery, peacefully protested in Ngaba district, the Chinese security forces immediately cracked down against the protesters, killing 23 Tibetans. Kirti Monastery was surrounded by the Chinese forces and cut off from the rest from the outside world, turning it into a virtual prison. According to a recent report by the New York-based Human Rights Watch, the security expenses in Ngaba is twice as much as other areas in China's Sichuan province. Since March 20th, monks of the Kirti monasteries have been divided into eight divisions and a patriotic education campaign is forcefully imposed on them almost day and night. Monks' quarters are searched, all el electronic devices have been confiscated, holy scriptures are cut into pieces by knives, and monks are forced to stamp on photos of His Holiness the Dalai Lama. About 100 monks were arrested, tortured, and interrogated. Two monks from Kirti Monastery, one monk from Dongri Monastery, and another monk from Gomang Monastery committed suicide in their quarter because of torture and intense fear. And the Kirti Monastery was barred from holding an important religious festival in the winter. Likewise, an order was given to ban this year's Tibetan New Year celebration. On February 27, 2009, 27-year-old Tape from Kirti Monastery in Ngaba set himself on fire as a protest against China's repressive rule. The security personnel, instead of putting out the fire, shot him. His whereabouts remains unknown to date. Following the immolation incident of 20-year-old Lopsang Pinsok on March 16, 2011, the armed security personnel have been deployed in the Kirti Monastery and surrounded the monastery for the second time. Within the barricaded monastery, the monks were divided into 55 groups and over 800 monk government officials moved into the monastic compound. On the night of 21st of April 2011, a large contingent of army swooped down on the monastery and arrested more than 300 monks and military trucks and were detained in an unspecified location. On 15th August, Tsewang Nobo, a monk from Nyatso, uh, monastery in Kham set himself on fire to protest against the brutal Chinese rule in Tibet. On September 26, 18-year-old Lopsang Kalsang and 19-year-old Lopsang Kunchok, both from Kirti Monastery, set themselves on fire on October. Subsequently, many others followed suit. 17-year-old Kalsang Wangchuk from Kirti Monastery on 7th October, 19-year-old Chopil and 18-year-old Kaying on 15th October, 19-year-old Norbu Damdul on 17th October, 20-year-old Tenzin Wangmo from Mame De Chinchokolung Naniri on 25th October, and Dawat Sering Among of Kanzi on 26th October. On 26th August, the Chinese authorities accused three monks from the Kirti Monastery of aiding Pinsok, who set himself on fire. In brief, for the Tibetan people in and outside Tibet, particularly those born and raised under the Red Banner, there is no greater expression of their desperate opposition to the Chinese government than by resorting to the most powerful method of a non-violent movement, which is by refraining from causing any harm to the Chinese people and appealing to the Chinese government, than by setting themselves on fire. If repression continues, it will certainly harm the interests of both Tibet and China. If the repression and the hardline policies are stopped, it will naturally lead to peace and harmony. In fact, in order to promote harmony between Tibetans and Chinese, I have recently proposed that I will extend my full cooperation wherever required. Mm. Upon request from many of the people concerned, I have time and again approached the Chinese government for permission to visit Tibet, thinking that my visit will give an opportunity to deliver a few words of advice and solace. Unfortunately, I have yet to receive any response from the Chinese government. 
in order to forge a friendly coexistence with the Tibetan and Chinese peoples and in order to create a harmonious society as advocated by Hu Jintao. The dialogue between Tibet and China must start at the earliest. We also urge you to pressure China to allow independent international delegates and the media to visit Ngapa and other Tibetan areas. Your support restores the inner strength of the Tibetan people, both in and outside Tibet. As one of the spokespeople of the Tibetans, it is my duty to convey to you the aspiration of the Tibetan people, particularly those who have been directly affected by the recent events in Tibet. I would like to express my deep appreciation for giving me this opportunity to testify on behalf of the Tibetan people and their plight. Well, thank you very much. Um, yes. And uh, I just have a couple of questions. Uh, you've been here, you've been very patient. You've been here for a long time. I don't want to keep you too long. But uh, in his written uh, testimony, Rinpoche says that, 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 that Tibetans want other countries to know of their suffering under Chinese rule. And I just want to make clear uh, that because of the testimony that we have heard here today, that uh, I, I want you to know, and I want all Tibetans to know that, uh, that we have heard your appeal and we are listening. Uh, and uh, I think we all feel this uh, call to action. Uh, and so um, you have inspired us and um, you have our promise that we're going to work uh, toward achieving the goals that you outlined in your testimony. Um, I just have a couple of questions. And the first one is, can, can you describe the, the so-called re-education campaigns that are being carried out, uh, that are being carried on at uh, Kirti Monastery and, and how this affects the religious practice by monks? Talking about patriotic re-education, basically religious affairs should be left to the religious institutions and personalities. So this re-education is about changing a religious uh, matter into a political matter and by using force to do that. For example, uh, a body that doesn't believe in the life after is wanting to intervene and issue about reincarnation. They're wanting to interfere in the affairs of the next, who will be the next Dalai Lama, is basically that. So this re-education is about educating people about non-religious matters in a religious guise and use, using politics to do that. And then the, this is, although they call it re-education, it's basically asking people what they uh, feel about these things. And when they respond accordingly, then they are beaten up and tortured. Uh, Basically, there's no education at all. It's uh, about asking them what they feel and then beating them up and then uh, deciding thereafter. Uh, it is like uh, uh, how you conduct, uh, uh, undertake action against a prisoner of war. Let me ask you one, one other question. Um, what, is, what is the status of the uh, 300 monks who were forcibly removed from Kirti Monastery earlier this year? I mean, have they been released or are some of them being detained? Um, for those who have been released, uh, have they been permitted to return to Kirti Monastery? Mm -hmm. uh, Although we call it 300 people, we aren't sure how, how many people there are because they, they were taken at, in the dead of the night. 
At night, uh, many soldiers came parading, and then through uh, uh, fear, uh, rise, arousing fear, they took them away. Till now we don't have any clarity as to where they have gone or where they have been taken. It looks like one or two may have been able to escape and come back to the monastery. Other than that, I haven't heard of anything. Oh, thank you. Mr. Wolf. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you for your testimony. Um, uh, what was the what year were you the last time you were in Tibet? During 1985-86. Is it against the law to have a picture of the Dalai Lama in uh, Tibet? When I was there, although there was the law, it wasn't imposed strictly. Uh, when I was there, no one would have one unless you were private, so no one would show it publicly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, thereafter the situation uh, became worse and they became restricted. Is it true that every monastery has the public security police that are stationed at the monastery? Uh, in the beginning, they did not post them in all monasteries. They posted them only in monasteries they were suspicious about. For example, in our region, Kirti Monastery and Taksang Monastery had them. And what about today? Today the situation is worsened. For example, in the Kirti Monastery, all the four sites are barricaded and uh, PSB people have been posted there. So basically, Mr. Chairman, every monastery, be it like your church or synagogue, would have the public security police uh, there. What that, is that the? Is it. That is it. What is the population now of uh, Tibet? Uh, how how many Chinese citizens are there, and how many Tibetan citizens are 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 there? Uh, if we do a rough estimate today, uh, the Tibetan population is smaller than the Chinese population there. So basically, you have ethnic cleansing by the Chinese government. That is it. It. Yes, it is. So you have the Chinese government who's aiding the Khartoum government bring about cleansing, ethnic cleansing, and genocide in Darfur and the Blue Nile. They're now bringing ethnic cleansing into Tibet. How, in the schools, is the curriculum taught in Tibetan or is it taught in Chinese? Uh, in schools, uh, the curriculum is primarily taught in Chinese. And also, once you graduate from schools, unless you are fluent in Chinese, you don't have a means of earning a livelihood. So 